Hey. All right, welcome to my scope. My name is Tanessa Shears. I am a personal trainer and lifestyle specialist. My goal is to help you stay motivated, on track, and in love with your fitness program so that you don't fall off track. So what I really like is helping people uh, understand what motivates them and how they can tune their mental health so that uh, you're easier to stay on target. So what I'm going to talk about today are cardio tips, tools, and tricks and why I don't do traditional cardio anymore. So I've been a personal trainer with the American College of Sports Medicine for about seven years now. And what I've learned over time is that cardio doesn't work. Traditional, go on the treadmill for 45 minute cardio, it doesn't work. People find it boring, uh, it's monotonous, and after a while your body adapts and you need to continue doing more and more of the same thing to start seeing results. So your 45 minutes quickly turns into 50, turns into an hour, turns into an hour and a half, and you're still not seeing results. So I'm going to talk about the different kind of cardio that uh, you see people doing and then uh, give you some tips on what I like best, what works for me, and why I only do cardio one time a week. So hi, welcome. Thank you for joining in. We're talking about cardio tips and tricks. I'm Tanessa Cheers, personal trainer. Uh, so we're talking about the types of cardio and what I like to do. So uh, there's traditional steady state cardio, and this is what everyone knows as cardio. So for example... Um, you're heading on the treadmill for 40 minutes, you're on the elliptical for half an hour, uh, you're going out for a walk. This is called steady state cardio. And while this is good in mild doses, what you wouldn't want to do is do prolonged amounts of steady state cardio because over time it raises a hormone in your body called cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone and what it does is it actually helps to decrease muscle mass over time. Muscle mass is what burns calories and burns fat. So if you are burning away your muscle mass with an hour a day of steady state cardio, you're actually going to plateau and find it very hard to break out of that. So that's called steady state cardio. So what a lot of people have done is they've modified into what they call interval training. So with interval training, there are periods of high intensity followed by low intensity. There can be lots of different ratios, and people often start with a one-to-one -one ratio. So say they're doing one minute of uh, maybe a light jog followed by one minute of a walk. Uh, when you become a little more effective at your cardio, what you can actually do is turn this into one minute of a high-intensity run followed by one minute of a walk. So as you get more skilled, what you do with your intensity is you turn that into two minutes of running and then you go into one minute of walking. So what this actually does is it helps to increase your VO2 max. So if you don't know what that term means, it means your body's ability to use oxygen. So that's called your VO2 max. So interval training has actually been shown to bring that up, which helps to add muscle mass and keep it there because the intensity is high. So that's a really common type of interval training. So if I'm doing my interval training, I will keep it short. My rule of thumb is if you can do interval training for more than 20 minutes, you are not going near hard enough. So I actually have invested in this little timer here. It's called a Gym Boss, and uh, I got it at just a local fitness store. I'm sure you can get them online at gymboss.com. And it's an interval timer, and not only does it beep, at the intervals you set, but it can vibrate too. So if you have it on your shirt and you have your headphones in, it'll vibrate, which is totally awesome. Uh, what this is really good for is setting your interval training. So for example, if I want to do one minute of work, 30 minutes of rest, I will set it to beep at one minute and again at 30 seconds or to vibrate so that I know when to um, start my intervals or pick back up or take a break. And I don't have to be watching my cell phone. I don't have to worry about bringing my cell phone in the gym and breaking the screen. Uh, I also don't have to have a traditional timer, which is really nice. This thing does it all for you. I think I paid 20 bucks. It was super cheap. And I've used it, and the batteries have lasted like four years, so it's absolutely fantastic. They just take little AAA batteries. Really cool tool, and what I find this most effective for is my favorite, favorite, favorite kind of interval training, which is called Tabata. So a lot of people haven't heard of Tabata. Um, it's a Japanese scientist that actually, it's called the Tabata Protocol. And what it is, is it is eight rounds of cardio, so eight rounds. You work as hard as you can for 20 seconds, and I'm talking like, I can't breathe anymore, this is hard, 20 seconds, and you follow that up with 10 seconds of rest. So a good example would be if I were to uh, do something like really intense jumping jacks or high knees as fast as I can till I'm out of breath at 20 seconds, 
10 seconds, you take a break. There are eight rounds in a row before you take a longer break. That gives you a total of four minutes. So 20 on, 10 off at your highest intensity is that 20 on. Eight rounds through, that's four minutes, and that's called a Tabata interval. So what's really cool about Tabata is you do not need to do traditional cardio with that. You don't need to be on the treadmill. You don't need to be on uh, the Stairmaster. You can do things like kettlebell swings, push-ups, uh, tuck jumps, box jumps. Uh, you can do ring rows as fast as you can. You want to be hitting fatigue at that 20-second mark. So it really allows you to switch up your training. And what I find is super important with switching up your training is it gets different muscles working all the time so that you're never actually reaching um, a plateau with that muscle group. So I usually find I only need to do, like, if I do five Tabatas or even four at four minutes each, I'm looking at 60 minutes of the most intense work of the day, and I do one of those a week, and that's all I need for my cardio. And I have found it is fantastic at ramping up your metabolism, uh, keeping muscle mass, maintaining, even building, and allowing you to burn calories like crazy. So, again, I use the Gym Boss app for that, and I just found it uh, at my local fitness department store, but you can also, I think, get them online at a Gym Boss website, but they are absolutely fantastic. I love, 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 love Tabata training. I do it with all of my clients. What I actually do, um, for people that haven't done Tabata before, it can be excruciatingly intense. So what I would do instead then is give someone who is used to doing traditional cardio 25 minutes of traditional cardio and one Tabata interval. So that's a total of 30 minutes cardio. As you remember, our Tabatas are four minutes long. What I would then do is the following week, do two Tabatas. So maybe you want to do kettlebell swings and box jumps and then follow it up with 20 minutes of steady state cardio. So every week you're progressively adding one Tabata interval and taking away one or five minutes of cardio. So by week six, you are doing six Tabatas. So that is going to be hella hard, but the point is that you've worked up to it. I think it would be very difficult to start off on uh, six Tabatas. So that's, um, that's my favorite type of interval training, but if we're going to talk about my absolute favorite way to incorporate cardio, uh, it's a form of training called metabolic resistance training, MRT. So what MRT is, it's a type of resistance training that is done in a circuit-like style. So I might put four exercises together. I might do a push-up, a goblet squat, a seated row, and maybe like a plank jack, so where my feet are jumping in and out. I will do each of those as hard as I can for 50 seconds, take a 10 second break, and I use my timer for that. And then I will go through each move, so one, two, three, four, and take a break after the last move. So I would repeat that three times. So metabolic resistance training is taking your traditional strength training uh, exercises, and they can be machines, they can be cables, they can be bar work, they can be dumbbells, they can be body weight, they can be part cardio, part strength training. And then what I do is I put them together um, in a pattern, and I go through it that way. So by doing your weight training with good form, of course, but doing them under time and doing them for as many reps as you can get in that specific period of time, back to back to back to back with minimal rest, it allows your heart rate to go up and therefore uh, adding in cardio without actually having to do any type of cardio at all in terms of like the traditional stuff, sitting on the treadmill uh, or going on the stairs or the elliptical or the rower. So I'll just let you guys know uh, four different types of cardio that I I do with my clients, some more than others. And to, just to recap, they were steady state, which is just the going long and hard at a steady pace on the equipment, or you can go outside or running. The second type is going to be uh, interval training, and that's uh, most people start interval training with a minute run, a minute walk, or a minute fast rowing, a minute slow rowing. 
Uh, I talked about Tabata, which is that eight rounds of 20 seconds of hard work, 10 seconds of rest. And lastly, metabolic resistance training, so MRT, and that's putting together resistance training items in a circuit without break in between for a specific period of time or counted reps. So you could also do 15, 15, 15, 15 reps of everything, or you could do it for time, like I suggested with 15, 50 seconds on, 10 seconds off. So those are all fantastic ways. If you're doing one, Try switching it up. If you have two cardio days a week, try doing something different on the other day so that your body is not adapting. As soon as your body starts to adapt, you are no longer going to see the progress that you are after, and you are going to have to do more of that thing to get the same results. So instead, I really recommend switching up your types of cardio regularly. If you're used to walking on a flat ground, go uphill. If you're used to going uh, slow for 60 minutes, go hard for 30 minutes. Try to change up stuff like that. Uh, So that's all the tips I have for today. Again, my name is Tanessa Shears. I'm a personal trainer and lifestyle specialist out of Vancouver, Canada. Uh, I'd love to take your tips and questions. And my goal is to help you stay motivated in the gym, help you find ways to uh, enjoy your workouts, add some spice in and make it different. So again, my scope is all going to be tips and tricks on how to get fit, fast and make it fun. So again, if you want to find me outside of Periscope, I am on Facebook as Tanessa Fit. Also, you can check out my website, www.tanessafit.com. There you can find blog articles, my favorite resources to stay in shape, and uh, a little bit more about me. So I hope you check me out and uh, have a fantastic weekday, and I hope to be talking to you soon.